So today's video might be one of the most commonly requested uh, videos in the history of the Fan Showdown. Um, and now that we have four seasons of Fan Showdown behind us, I think no time is better than now to give the people what they want. Today we are going to have a tournament of champions of sorts. I've dusted off some old fan designs and we're going to reprint them and test them again to see once and for all, at least up until this point, who has made the best fan in Fan Showdown history. Oh, and to make it tougher on myself, I decided I would resin print them again. After that episode where I resin printed that A12X25 clone and it came out pretty good, I was like, why not, why not give another shot? So full disclosure, although I do have experience FDM printing, I do a lot of FDM printing at work and here, obviously. Um, when it comes to resin printing, I'm a bit of a noob. And although some aspects of FDM printing translate to resin, resin's its own beast and it's a beast I've yet to, uh, yet to slay. Now, before going on this adventure, I wanted to get a large format 3D printer. You guys come up with some pretty crazy big stuff. And I wanted to make sure if I had a resin printer to do something like this, I wanted to have enough volume to make it happen. And the biggest printer I had up until this point was the Elegoo Saturn, which, you know, it fits a fan pretty, pretty well, but nobody makes just fans anymore. Everybody makes assemblies. And I wanted to make sure I could fit all of it on a build plate and when I asked you guys about 3D printers in the last video or one of the last videos, a lot of you said that the Elegoo Jupiter was a great large format 3D printer. So I reached out to Elegoo and they were kind enough to send one over for this video. So thank you to Elegoo for making that happen. And you guys weren't lying. I actually, I actually love the Elegoo Jupiter. The Elegoo Jupiter has a monster 12.8 inch 6K mono LCD screen with a resolution of 5448 by 3064, giving it a build volume of about 277 by 156 by 300, which is more than enough to fit anything that you guys come up with into this print area. However, the first thing I noticed after dragging this monster box down to my basement was just how heavy the, the Jupiter is. The thing is made of almost entirely of metal and it's, it's pretty large. It has more of an industrial feel than anything, any other printer that I have really. And it, it weighs a lot, it weighs like 40 kilograms. So if there's a printer that you're really considering getting, make sure that make sure that you can handle 40 kilograms or at least have somebody nearby that can give you a hand to move it to where you need it to be. Now, something I really like about the Jupiter that I don't have on any of the other resin printers I have is the automatic filling. So the, the vat in that thing is pretty massive to go with the build volume. And I was concerned that when I had it loaded all the way up, I might run out of resin or I'd have to at least come down and refill it during a print. But luckily you just pop a bottle in the back there and it just drains into there and keeps the thing topped off the entire time you're building something. So that was pretty nice. Now the biggest problem with, through, with resin 3D printing, at least in my opinion, is the smell. And I don't really like the resin smell to be honest. And I was concerned that with such a huge vat of resin in there that it was just gonna be well, pretty stinky. But luckily that thing comes with a uh, a USB activated carbon filter that kind of mounts in the inside there. And with the door shut while it's printing, it does a really good job. I didn't really notice much smell emanating from the printer while it was actually running. Now, when you open up the door, obviously that's when all the, all the smells get out and it's a bit stinky, but when the door's shut and it's running as intended, it does a good job keeping things toned down in the smell department. But I learned while messing with this resin-based printing that they make plant-based resins now and they have much, much lower odor than just like standard resin does. Um, Elegoo actually sent some over and I cracked it open and while it's not odor-free, it's definitely way, way less potent than just like the standard stuff that I've always been used to running. So maybe that's the way to go uh, moving forward if any resin-based projects come up. Now, upon getting this big boy set up and leveled out, the first thing I wanted to do was just print something easy before jumping into the fan world. And the first thing I decided to try was this Einstein bust. And as somebody that does mostly FDM printing, this, this kind of blew me away. The, the detail in his hair and his wrinkles on his face is just something that FDM printers just can't do. So after I printed that, I was like, I'm gonna get a bit nutty. I'm gonna make something that the printer probably probably won't be able to pull off. So I downloaded the Eiffel Tower and I scaled it down to be like an inch tall. And I was like, there's no way that that little tiny lattice work is gonna be, be recreated in something this small on a big old printer like that. And the first attempt, this is, the, this is number one. This is the first time I tried to print this really tiny Eiffel Tower. It came out flawless and blew my mind. Like I, like I said, I have so little resin 3D printing experience and I was able to make something this cool 
in the first go was was astonishing to me. And the fact that if you look at even the floors, like the floors of the Eiffel Tower, there's this little tiny railing that's modeled all the way around it. And that even came out. I, I was blown away. I really like this model, to tell you the truth. It's so cool to me. But after these two, the, the two attempts, first print, second print, perfect. I was like, I'm feeling pretty confident about these fans. Yeah, that confidence didn't last. Now the first fan I started with that I showed you before was the OG. This is the Acceleron. Way back in season one on episode five was the first time we seen the Acceleron, which was created by Thomas. And this thing, well, it was really good. It, 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 it ended up beating every fan in season one going on to win. Um, it, the, the design of this fan still holds up to this day. I think it looks good. A lot of you out there have really liked this fan. I know this is a, a fan favorite, you could say. But the craziest thing to happen during this season of the Fan Showdown, given it was, especially because it was season one, I just started this. After this video went live, I had a company reach out to me and was like, Hey, we saw the uh, Acceleron. We want to we wanna talk to you about licensing the idea for our products. And I was like, what? I was kind of blown away. I don't think I ever told you what company it was because at the time I didn't know if I could say, but I, it's been a couple years at this point. But from what I can remember, I believe it was Skytech Gaming. They reached out and they were like, we want to we wanna license the Acceleron for our, for our PC builds. If you don't know, Skytech Gaming is one of those pre-built PC gaming companies. And yeah, they were going to use one of these in their in their gaming setups. And I was like, that's incredible. But um, the Acceleron is not my fan. I didn't make it. It's Thomas's. I will do my best to find Thomas and put you guys in touch. And maybe you can work something out. I even made a video back then. I was like, we got to find Thomas. And with the help of you guys and YouTube, we I was able to track down Thomas, get his information, send it over to the uh, contact at Skytech, put them two in contact with each other. And yeah, and I never really heard more about it after that. To be honest, I always really wanted to know what happened with that. I remember Thomas's name showed up in a video after that one, uh, sometime after, where he said that they were doing, they were like in the middle of licensing agreements and maybe that this was going to become a thing, but that was all we ever heard. So other than that, if you're wondering if I know anything, unfortunately I do not. I would like to know. Maybe, you know, nothing ever happened from it. I actually went to Skytech's website, looked at the fans they offer, and didn't notice anything it looked like um, this. So maybe, maybe just fizzled out or maybe, maybe Thomas is on a super yacht. I'm riding on a dolphin, doing flips and shit. If we get really lucky, Thomas still watches the fan showdown and he will leave a comment down below telling us what exactly happened with that little setup. If you do see a comment from Thomas down there, make sure to like upvote it or reply so it pushes it to the top and I can pin it for, for everybody to see. So this is where it all started. Back in season one, everything was a bit simpler back then. There was just fans, nobody was doing any accessories to it. And this fan actually came out uh, really good. Again, it was, it was very easy to print. I don't know what about this geometry made it easy to print, but again, I was feeling very, very confident. I was like, what could possibly go wrong? Because the next fan up to be printed was the Slug Mark II from season two episode 15. This fan didn't come on to season two until the very last episode. And when it showed up, it, it pretty much dominated. This is actually the first time that I can remember. I, I don't think, I think this is the first time that somebody added like an intake velocity stack type shroud to their fan. And you guys, if you know anything about the fan showdown, that has become a staple of fans. It's everybody learned that after the slug that you could easily add a performance to your fan just by adding an intake and then exhaust started to show up. It just got a bit wacky after the slug Mark II came to the, came to the show. But let me tell you, that fan, that fan caused me problems. The shroud was what I was concerned with. It's very thin, it's kind of tall. I was like, that might be tough, but surprisingly that wasn't really that bad. The hardest part was just making, making it flat on the back. It, other than that, it just came out pretty easily. The fan is where I just struggled so hard. And I don't know why, I don't know if it's because it's the blades are so thick or because it's such a tall fan, but I couldn't get it to work. Like the supports kept detaching, the blades would get distorted and warped or it would start peeling from the build plate. I was losing many hours of sleep trying to get that thing to work, and it, it just took a bit of a trial and error, to say the least, to kind of figure things out. Now, the Slug Mark II might be where the um, shrouds and the intakes and stuff started, but it wasn't until Season 3 that we saw it reach its full potential. Back in Season 3, Episode 3 of the Fan Showdown, we had our first encounter with the final boss, and we weren't ready.
a fan with the most fitting name ever created. Now, season three had 10 episodes where we tested something like 41 fans on the same setup, and the cheater just mopped the floor with every single one of them. I pretty much ended season three just to mix it up a little bit because the cheater, it just was unbeatable. Nobody was, we weren't even getting close anymore. The cheater was just like, nah, nah, just destroying all comers. And I was like, you know what? Let's just wipe the board clean. Let's start a new testing kind of process. Let's, let's, just, let's just spice it up a little bit so we can get some new people at the top. And you know, because the cheater was just so dominant, we brought the cheater into season four as like the new, the new boss, the new fan that we were trying to dethrone. Yeah, it, it stayed there for quite a while. But on season four, episode nine, it seemed like the jig might be finally up when we met the fan, Unswirler. The Unswirler was a similar design to the cheater. Um, so it was attempting to beat it at its own game. And it kind of seemed like it did. And I say kinda because there was a bit of controversy. Okay, I made a video on the V400. And in that video, I printed out some gaskets out of uh, TPU. And I put those gaskets on the swirler or the unswirler and it beat the uh, the cheater. Now this, this drove a wedge into the fan showdown community. <laughs> for the finale of season four, we're just gonna, once and for all, we're just gonna find out who's the best. So I took both fans, I reprinted them. I took a brand new A12X25. I destroyed it as our new test bench. So we had two brand new fans on a brand new A12X25 and we were gonna see once and for all which one was the best, and the cheater came out on top by the skin of its teeth. But now the Unswirler's back, it's printed in resin, and it's gonna try to take down the cheater once and for all. So how are we gonna go about seeing which fan is actually the best fan ever? Well, I asked you on my community tab how we should go about testing this, and out of the 4,500 of you that voted, 72% of you said you wanted to see the winner decided based on which fan pushed the most air, through a radiator, kind of like what we're doing on season five. But this, there was a lot of comments and I decided to read some of the comments and many, many, many of you said, why not do both? You know, push air through a radiator and then don't push air through a radiator, just push it right down the tube to simulate, you know, static pressure and like case flow. And then the winner would be the fan that does the best on both of those. And I was like, that's a good idea. So that is what we're gonna do. I am gonna have the radiator set up and I'm gonna take the radiator away. We're just gonna run wind tunnel and the fans are gonna get points based on how they finish. So fan in first place gets four points, third place gets two points, second place gets third points, <laughs> last place gets one. It really, numbers really throw me off, but you get it, it's gonna work like that. And then the fan with the most points after both uh, rounds is gonna be the all-time winner. But before we get into which fan is actually the best one ever created on the entire show, in the history of the show, Let's first run them on the smoke test in one final go so you guys can try to guess which one you think is going to be the best based on what you see in their flow patterns. And when we look at them on the flow test, they all look pretty good, which is expected. These are all reigning champions. But based on what you see in the comments, which one do you think is going to be the best? So with no radiator, the Acceleron produced 570 feet per minute of airflow. The Cheater produced 786. The Unswirler produced 807, and the Slug Mark II produced 647. Giving the Acceleron one point, the Cheater three points, the Unswirler four points, and the Slug Mark II two points. When we added the radiator, the Acceleron produced 433 feet per minute of airflow, the Cheater produced 552, the Unswirler produced 477, and the Slug Mark II produced 528. Giving the Acceleron one point, the Cheater four points, the Unswirler two, and the Slug Mark two, three. Meaning in the end, the Acceleron finished with two points, the Slug Mark two, five points, the Unswirler six points, and the Cheater seven points. Once again, the Cheater is, is the reigning champion. The Cheater cannot be defeated. It is, it is here to stay. It has risen again to the top of the pile. It's, the cheater's just built different. So thank you all for watching. Um, at the very least, I learned, I learned a lot about resin 3D printing. We now have a giant resin printer that we can use uh, on future product, projects. So if you have an idea for a future video, uh, leave me a comment down below if you want me to do something with the yellow goo, or maybe you want me to FDM print these fans and retest them all. I don't know, it's up to you. Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to get in on the fan showdown, um, head down to the description. There's information on what to do. Essentially, I need at least an STL file sent to thefanshowdown at gmail.com 
to get uh, get into the competition. If you want to help out the channel, the best thing to do is get subscribed, share it with your friends. We'll see you next time.